Anyway, hi everyone, I'm Brian Hale at Resin, and I've got a huge apology to make to everyone involved, which is I love... Get use the mic. I love talking about Resin, but I despise introducing it. And the reason is these three words right here. They are so buzzword dense. What we do is DevOps for IoT. We're doubling up on the buzzwords, but the fundamental thesis is code is moving out to the edge, it's in digital signage displays, it's in elevators, it's in uh, large skyscrapers, it's in 3D printers, and it needs to be managed, and that is what we do. So this is August 2012 on Mars. The Mars rover landed, and I don't know if you folks remember this, and it sat there for days receiving a software update. It had no navigation software when it landed. So the NASA team was, during the 250 days in which this thing was flying to Mars, 160 million miles, they were actually building the navigational software. So it sat there swapping out landing software for navigational software in an incredible feat of engineering. And in that exact same summer of 2012, leading up to the London Olympics, there was a team, the Resin founders, it turns out, who were not managing software that was 160 million miles away. This was a team of software PhDs who were trying to manage software on remote devices a mile away, in the square mile of the city of London. And they were smart guys, and they figured, all right, we've got this project, we've got a few hundred trash bins, as it were. And they're actually the world's most expensive over-engineered trash bins, but that's another story. They're running full i7 processors, digital signage displays, browsers, and these guys thought, well, how hard can this be, right? We're, we've studied software for a long time. It's just in a different place, that's all. And soon enough, the realities of, the, of de deploying remotely just smacked them in the head. And these smart guys were wandering the streets, nursing these devices back to health. So this is actually in front of a pub in London, this is one of our co-founders, he pulled the desk out, pulled a chair out, and he's manually running codes by hand, trying to recover a brick device that is all over the city. And the thought immediately was, you know, this is 2012, right? How can the state of affairs be like this? How can we get push code to things like Amazon Web Services instantaneously, but in the hardware world, we're living in the 80s, right? The annual release cycle is alive and well. And what this team went out and did after that is they built resin. And resin looks very unnatural um, to the naked eye. It looks like a duckbill platypus. Um, but under the covers, it's actually perfectly engineered to live coexistent in these two different worlds, in the software world and the hardware world. And I'll explain what that means. Um, as I go through this, I'll mix in a few lessons we've learned. What we've built, if any developers here have worked on things like Heroku or AWS or Cloud Foundry, Right? You guys are living in luxury, I assure you. Right? You deploy multiple times per day, you iterate, everything is fast and safe and fun. Um, we're bringing that experience to hardware. Right? We're taking people that are used to deploying once per year and giving them the ability to deploy new services, new features, patch, patch security vulnerabilities, whatever they want at the push of a button. And that's our mission. Uh, about 35 people based here in Seattle, venture-backed, growing relatively well, and very, very international, as I'll talk about in a minute. So this is what it looks like from an end user's perspective. I'm going to start flipping through, because that one minute mark I know is impending. Um, under the covers, what we actually do is we create Docker containers built for certain chipset architectures. We shrink them down, deploy them safely, and bring the data back. Everything we do is open source, as it possibly can be. Our customers do absolutely crazy, crazy things with us. Tidal turbines out off the coast of Australia, 3D printed body parts, underwater drones, one of the largest property owners in New York, and they're all managing software out on the edge just like they do with AWS. We ourselves uh, do some pretty crazy things as well. We hold the world record for the largest Raspberry Pi cluster um, sitting in our office in Capitol Hill if you want to come check it out. We've deployed software to drones while they fly. We get very, very aggressive. Um, three quick lessons before I wrap. Be a platypus, right? Startup opportunity exists at the intersection of two seemingly unrelated fields, right? We see it locally with Redfin, software developers and real estate agents. Aptio brings IT and finance together. And you know our story at Resin. Uh, the other thing that we do is we live the problem 
deeply. Every Friday is Hack Friday. We step into our customer's shoes, we build hardware projects, we take time to understand how hard it is to actually ship real physical items, and of course, we manage that software with resin. The other thing we do uh, is we double down on being international. Everyone at the company, we have 12 different countries represented. They all are first class citizens in how we operate, and you have to embed that culture deeply in what you do, and we're hiring, so come talk to us. Careers at resin.io, thank you very much. Fire away. But Brian, stay by the mic. Sorry, I'm just a loud talker. Does that okay. work? Well, we also have a live stream, okay. so they need Fair to enough. hear you. Have at it. Uh, how do you prevent the channel from being hijacked? The channel oh, from being hijacked? Oh, my goodness. Okay, this is a good question. It's really important. Security is pretty much the number one topic in IoT. The, the short answer to that question, and there's a long answer that could last all night, is you secure the channel, and then actually the real long-term answer is you integrate deeply with chipset vendors and you sign all of the packages that are deployed in between, and you create a secure channel of trust across truly end-to-end. -end. That's an industry-wide collaboration that's yet to happen. For our part, we take all the best practices you would in a web service, and we go a little bit further for the use case. But it's a really, really long answer. Who's your uh, most obvious competitor? <laughs> the competitor is uh, duct tape and glue <laughs> and nails and... It's DIY is really what it is. Um, or even worse, it's stagnation. Just letting this code sit out there, unpatched, no new features, no performance improvements, just sitting there. Uh, yes and no. Most of what we do is actually Apache 2 license open source. But a lot of the problems we've solved exist at the intersection of DevOps and IoT. So how do you translate cloud and web technologies to hardware situations. So you got to have really, really light payloads to go across 2G and 3G networks. We've had customers in Africa and India do that. And also, how do you support a huge diversity of chipset architectures? It's not just homogenous servers in a data center. And then the third thing is, and this is where a lot of the hard work is, how do you treat failure differently? Right? So these devices are not just AWS instances. You can fire off an API call and get a new one. Right? They're singularly important. Uh, for you folks that might have lived in the DevOps world and are familiar with cattle and pets. A couple of heads nodded. We deal with pets, not cattle, right? You've got to treat them very, very importantly. These are members of the family, not anonymous, um, I don't know, slices of beef? Uh, anyway, you get the metaphor, hopefully. Um, anything else? All right, I've got, two, I've got two answers for everything. Um, fundamentally, it's about 256 megs of RAM tends to be that threshold. It depends a lot on the applications you run. So the devices you see us on are things like, uh, in the consumer and hacker maker world, Raspberry Pis and BeagleBones, Intel Edisons and Nooks. We support about 20 Linux-based devices. Uh, the longer answer involves ways you can use those devices as conduits to simpler devices. Um, but I don't think we've got time for me to opine on that, but happy to talk later. Thank you, Brian. All right, thanks everybody.